It's that time of year again, it comes twice a year, Ubuntu release date. And I'm going to take a look at the recently released Ubuntu 2010 Groovy Gorilla. I'm going to take a look at six official flavors of Ubuntu 2010. I'm going to take a look at the flagship Ubuntu, as well as Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, and Ubuntu Budgie. The first thing you need to know about all of these flavors of Ubuntu 2010 is that these are not LTS releases. These are not what they call long-term support releases. These are interim releases, and they're only supported for nine months. So if you install Ubuntu 2010 in July 2021, it stops receiving support. So you have to upgrade to the next version of Ubuntu at that point, which would be 2104 next April. I don't like doing that myself, and I doubt most desktop Linux users like having to upgrade to a new version of their OS every six months. So for most desktop Linux users, I strongly suggest just stick with the LTS releases of Ubuntu. So if you want to run Ubuntu, I recommend going and grabbing the latest LTS release, which was Ubuntu 20.04. Now I'm going to start with the flagship edition of Ubuntu because let's talk about some of the stuff that's installed that will be common on all six flavors of these versions of Ubuntu. So if I do Control alt t to bring up a terminal, and I think that hotkey will actually work in every flavor that we discussed today. Control alt t usually brings up a terminal in Ubuntu and many other Linux distributions as well. That's usually the first one I try. And let's talk about the kernel version. So if I run a uname dash r, you will see that all of these flavors of Groovy Gorilla will be running kernel version 5.8. Some of the improvements that come with kernel version 5.8 include airtime queue limits for better Wi-Fi connection quality, USB 4 support, Thunderbolt 3 protocol that's been added to this version of the kernel. We also have Intel Gen 11 and Gen 12 graphics support, so that's your Ice Lake and Tiger Lake. There also is some initial support for AMD Family 19H Zen 3 and some initial support for Power 10. Of course, there were a lot of tool chain upgrades as well. You're going to see things like glibc 2.32, OpenJDK 11, GCC 10, LLVM 11. All of these are available to you uh, for some things that are going to be installed out of the box. Uh, I know many of you guys are Python devs, so if I run Python 3 to get a Python prompt, you will see Python is version 3.8.6. Let me type uh, exit and then the parentheses there to get out of the Python prompt. Now this will be the first version of Ubuntu that will feature desktop images for the Raspberry Pi 4, so that's a really big deal. Also, ZFS is no longer in the experimental stage, so during the installation process, used to, you could choose ZFS as your file system, but it had a warning stating that that was an experimental feature. They've removed the words experimental from that now during the installation process, so I guess according to the Ubuntu guy, ZFS now is is stable and ready to go for those of you that want to try out the ZFS file system. One of the common questions people often ask is how many snaps are pre-installed, uh, especially on the flagship edition of Ubuntu here. So if I just do a snap list, uh, they really don't have any snaps installed. So the people that claim that everything is a snap pack, uh, that's not the case here. They have nothing installed as a snap pack except the snap store is a snap pack. <laughs> everything else here is just part of snaps being on the system. So it's just core packages. So... For the flagship edition of Ubuntu, of course, GNOME is the desktop environment. This is GNOME 3.38. And if we look at some of the pre-installed applications on Ubuntu 2010, uh, one of the things I really like about Ubuntu has always been that it's not bloated. And when I talk about not being bloated, I mean it doesn't come with a ton of stuff pre-installed. And I did the full installation. They actually have a minimal ISO, which comes with even less stuff installed. But the full install really just gives you the basics. You know, some basic utilities such as you have a web browser, you have some of the LibreOffice suite, you have Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer. Uh, you have your Thunderbird email client, you have a text editor, and you have some basic utilities like a terminal and a calculator. You have your audio player, rhythm box as well. And, you know, not much else. You know, it doesn't install everything in the kitchen sink. And I kind of like that because it leaves it up to you guys, the user, to install the programs that you want to use instead of being fed, you know, a whole slew of applications that you may or may not even use. 
Firefox, by the way, since I mentioned the browser. This is Firefox version 81. If I go to the menu and go to help and to about Firefox, Firefox 81.0.2. And let me close that. It's going to complain about closing multiple tabs. LibreOffice is on version 7.0.2. Thunderbird is on version 78.3.2. Now with GNOME being on version 3.38, it does have some improvements to some of the older versions of GNOME. I did notice in the application grid, you know, I can grab an application such as the backup utility here, which is the Deja Dupe utility. I could grab it and I can move it anywhere I want to in this uh, application menu. So they don't always have to be listed alphabetically. You can rearrange this however you want to now. One of the biggest features added with GNOME 3.38 is people have been complaining since the beginning of time with GNOME 3. Used to, when you go and click on the little power symbol here to get to your session menu, you know, if you wanted to reboot your computer, how do you reboot or restart the computer? Well, before you had to click power off here in the power off slash logout menu, then click power off. And then once you click power off, you were presented the option of shutting down the computer or restarting the computer. Now they actually just have restart as part of this menu because before it was completely counterintuitive how you rebooted your computer because you would think it would just be somewhere obvious in this menu. And before GNOME 3.38, it was not that obvious. So if I do a control alt T to bring up a terminal once again, and let me zoom in a little bit. Let's see if HTOP is installed on the system. It is not, but that is okay. Let me do a sudo apt update and just to sync the repositories to make sure we get the latest version of HTOP just in case, you know, it's had a new version in the last day or so. And now I'm going to run a sudo apt install HTOP. Let's go ahead and install this. Now this is a process viewer, interactive process viewer, but it tells us what kind of system resources Ubuntu is running in this virtual machine that I'm running it in. I gave this virtual machine two cores of my CPU. I gave it four gigs of RAM. And I will say GNOME 3.38, at least on Ubuntu, is a little slimmer than what I expected. Typically GNOME pushes about a gig, sometimes 1.1 gigs on a cold boot. And here on Ubuntu, 797 megs, that's not bad. 785 megs now, that is pretty slim for GNOME because GNOME has always been one of the heaviest as far as RAM usage. And I, it's been one of my complaints about it, but it looks like they're finally slimming it down. I don't know if that's work from the GNOME team or maybe some magic that the folks at Canonical are working to get GNOME a little slimmer. Kubuntu 2010 features the new KDE Plasma 5.19.5, and for the Qt Toolkit, we are on 5.14.2. If I go to the menu system, let's just briefly go to our applications, and let's check out some of what is installed by default under graphics. We have Gwynview, Ocular, under internet, we're going to have some of the same stuff we saw in the flagship edition of Ubuntu. We're going to have Mozilla Firefox for our web browser, Mozilla Thunderbird for our email client. We also have an IRC client, Conversation with a K. We have KTorrent, which of course is the BitTorrent client. Under multimedia, Elisa is our music player, and I believe that is new because in previous versions of Ubuntu, Cantata was the music player. Uh, I don't know why they went away from Cantata. I know Cantata is an MPD music client. Maybe they were trying to get away from MPD because I don't think Elisa uses the MPD, the music player daemon. And if I do a control alt T, let's see if that brings up a terminal here in Kubuntu. It does. And let's see if I can zoom in here. Of course, this is a different terminal rather than being the GNOME terminal. This is KDE's a console with a K. And again, just to verify, we know all of six flavors should be on kernel 5.8. Is HTOP installed? No, it is not. Let me do a sudo apt install HTOP. And let me run an HTOP. And you can see KDE Plasma is a bit better on system resources as far as it versus GNOME. So GNOME was taking up about 800 megs of RAM. Plasma here on Kubuntu 2010 is taking 677 megs of RAM at the moment. 
Uh, I've always found Plasma to be pretty fast. Uh, it's not the lightest weight desktop environment, but it's definitely nowhere near as heavy as things like GNOME, Cinnamon, Budgie, Deepin. Zubuntu 2010 looks very much like any other version of Zubuntu you've probably used in the last decade. <laughs> XFCE is the desktop environment. XFCE never really changes. If I go to the menu here and I search for about, let's go to about XFCE because this little utility is really nifty because it really tells us everything we need to know. The XFCE desktop environment is still on version 4.14. It tells us the window manager is XFWM4. That's the uh, window manager within the XFCE desktop environment. The file manager is Thunar, of course. That's XFCE's file manager. So let me close out of that. If I look through the menu system here for what is installed, we have most of the XFCE utilities like the catfish file search and the uh, ngrampa archive manager. That's for zip and unzip and things like that. We have a calculator. We have a plain text editor, mouse pad. We have a terminal emulator. That's going to be the XFCE terminal emulator. Under games, we have just a couple of games here. Mine, Sudoku. Under graphics, not much here. The same programs we saw on Ubuntu and Kubuntu, although they do have GIMP pre-installed. Now, GIMP was not installed on either Ubuntu or Kubuntu, and I love GIMP. And let's see what version of GIMP we are on. It looks like 2.10. Let's get the exact version. I go to help and to about. We are on 2.10.18. GIMP is fantastic. It is the program I use to create all my thumbnails and all of my channel artwork for the YouTube channel. Under internet, of course, we're going to have Firefox and Thunderbird again, as well as the transmission BitTorrent client. That's good gnome's BitTorrent client, but it's a fantastic BitTorrent client. Under multimedia, we have the Parole Media Player, and we have Pulse Audio Volume Control and XF Burn, which is a CD burner. Under Office, we have the LibreOffice Suite. We also have our Document Viewer that's for viewing PDFs. And let me control alt T to get a terminal up. And once again, HTOP was not installed out of the box. I installed it. Let's run HTOP. And we are using 522 megs of RAM. That is the lightest yet as far as system resource usage. It's definitely lighter than Plasma and it's a lot lighter than the GNOME desktop environment. So XFCE is great for underpowered machines or older equipment. But even if you have a really high end workstation, XFCE is fantastic because of the speed. You know, some people are just speed freaks. I'm one of those. I want my desktop environment to be as light and as fast as possible. I will say because this is the third VM now. Uh, I really wish Ubuntu and all its flavors installed HTOP out of the box. There's two programs that I don't think make any sense not to have installed out of the box on Ubuntu, and they annoy me every time I install Ubuntu. HTOP is not installed, and everybody kind of uses HTOP. It should just be there. The other one is Vim. Everybody uses Vim. Uh, nobody uses VI, but Vim is not installed on Ubuntu or any of the flavors. Now let's take a look at Lubuntu 2010. Lubuntu features the LXQ desktop environment, and I will say, every time I look at Lubuntu, especially here in the last couple of releases, it just looks gorgeous. Now LXQT, LXQ, the desktop environment, is designed to be ultra light and fast, minimal. So if we go down to the menu system here, let's see what version of LXQ we're using. So if I type about, we get about LXQ. And let's see, we are on version 0.15.0 for the LXQ desktop environment. If I go to the menu system and just to check out some of what is installed, Arc is our archive manager, Featherpad is our plain text editor, a PC Man FM, the cute version of PC Man FM, is the file manager. I love PC Man FM. It's the file manager I install on all of my minimal window manager only installs because PC Man FM really doesn't have any uh, dependencies that it pulls down when you install it. Also under accessories, we have Clipper, which is our clipboard manager. Ah, Lubuntu, you, you get the gold star. Vim is installed out of the box on Lubuntu. You see, this is what I like about the Lubuntu team. You know, they understand the plight of the community. You know, when we complain about something, you know, they listen. Because I'm sure, 
You know, people had complained to them about them not being there and they put it there. I, I love it. I mean, that just, you know, you get an A++ Lubuntu team and I'm not even kidding. Under graphics, we have LX Image for Image Viewer. We have Screen Grab and Scan Light. That's a scanning utility and not too many people have scanners anymore. But if you have one, it's there for you. And under Internet, Firefox, again, is our web browser. But Thunderbird is not our email client. They have chosen to go with Trojita. I don't know if that's really how you pronounce that. I've, I've, I've always wondered how to pronounce this particular email client, but I'm not sure why anybody would use this thing. You know, if you're already going to install Mozilla Firefox, just install Mozilla Thunder, Thunderbird because <laughs> that's the one everybody's going to install anyway. So just save your users the hassle of having to remove Trojita and installing Thunderbird. Just do it <laughs> out of the box for them. Under Office, you have the LibreOffice suite again. And under Sound and Video, K3B is a disk burning utility. That's interesting that they include that. And VLC is our media player, I guess for audio and video VLC, which is fantastic also under system tools guess what age top <laughs> this is this is perfect lubuntu you are just so ahead of the curve compared to the other three flavors i've taken a look at and also you're ahead of the curve on system resource usage using only 426 megs of ram at the moment and this is a full desktop environment there are several things going on down here in the sys tray so if i closed a lot of these programs i could probably get that you know, down to 350 megs, maybe even down to under 300 megs, possibly. Let me close out that terminal. And the fifth flavor I want to take a look at is Ubuntu Mate 2010. Ubuntu Mate is competing heavily with Linux Mint and OpenSUSE and the fact that all three of those distros are trying to put as much green into their distros as possible. So if you're a big fan of the color green, you're going to love the Mate desktop environment. Mate is a fork of the old GNOME 2 desktop environment. So you have the top and bottom panels, but probably most people are going to change that. You're going to go down here to the Mate Control Center. If you go down to Look and Feel and go to Mate Tweak, and then go to panel and then you have the familiar layout that's familiar and that it's the old gnome 2 layout but you can change it to the mutiny layout if you wanted to and that should make mate mimic the unity layout although it doesn't look like anything's working my global menu and all is not working of course this is a vm here and without having a menu system <laughs> <laughs> kind of stuck you know how am i going to open a program well the good thing about ubuntu and all its flavors you always know Control alt t to the rescue because that brings up a terminal <laughs> so let me open the terminal and i believe the control center is actually called mate control center yes so let me open that back up and go back to the mate tweak tool go back to the panel and let's try something else if i go to the pantheon layout uh okay now we still don't get any kind of menu system Oh, there we go. We had to click reload. Ah, uh, I see. And that's probably what I needed to do on the mutiny layout, but I didn't do it. Anyway, you can see this is kind of reminiscent of the Mac OS kind of layout. You got the top panel, you got the uh, dock at the center at the bottom. Anyway, let's go through some of what is installed out of the box on Ubuntu Mate 2010. If I go under accessories, you have a lot of the standard Mate utilities, such as the uh, archive manager, the calculator, the font viewer, the search tool. Plank is the dock down here at the bottom. Pluma is their plain text editor. Uh, we also have Redshift, which adjusts the color uh, of your monitors that's good especially as it starts getting dark outside the color temperature of your monitors change to adjust with that it's supposed to be better for your eyes and also better for your sleep patterns better for your health under graphics we have a scanner we have the eye of monte image viewer we have shotwell which is the photo manager let's see what version of shotwell we are on because i don't think it was uh, installed on any of the other versions that we've taken a look at just yet this is shotwell 0.30.10 let me close that out under internet we have firefox as our web browser and we have transmission as the BitTorrent client they do not ship with an email client out of the box uh, it's probably not a horrible decision most people probably don't use desktop email anyway that most people are on webmail they're using services like gmail if you really need a desktop email client you can install it yourself so i don't hate that idea also under office we have the libreoffice suite again we have the actual document viewer again as well that's the pdf viewer 
Under sound and video, Celluloid, I believe, is our video player. And if I go to the help information about Celluloid, this is Celluloid 0.18, a GTK front end for the MPV. MPV is a minimal video player. Celluloid is just a front end to that video player. We also have Rhythmbox installed for our audio player. I do a control alt T again to get that terminal back up and is HTOP installed? Oh, come on. Blue Ubuntu is really putting you guys to shame. Come on, Ubuntu Mate team. You guys got to get HTOP installed out of the box. And don't make me have to install it. I bet I'd have to install Vim too. I bet you guys didn't pre-install Vim either. Uh, let me try it. Vim? Yeah, Vim is definitely not installed. Let's run HTOP. Let's check system resource usage. And we are using 728 megs of RAM at the moment. That's very similar to what Plasma was using. Uh, that's a bit lighter than what GNOME was using. And because Mate is a fork of an older version of GNOME, GNOME 2, it, I really would expect Mate to be a bit lighter than GNOME 3. But it's really only about 100 megs of RAM lighter <laughs> as far as the uh, system resources. So uh, I got an error there. I'm not going to bother sending that error report. And last but certainly not least is the Ubuntu Budgie 2010 release. Let me move my head out of the way so you guys can see this really nice widget here that's displaying the date and the time. I will say based purely on aesthetics, if we're just talking strictly looks, Ubuntu Budgie is definitely the king of the six flavors I've taken a look at so far. Uh, I love the Budgie desktop environment, and I love Ubuntu Budgie's version of the Budgie desktop environment. It, this is such a professionally looking uh, distribution. It looks really clean, really polished, and I, I just can't say enough good things about Ubuntu Budgie. And they have two different versions of the menu system here, depending on which one you click here. You have this first one, which is all your apps are just thrown together in a menu in one category. Or you could click here and they break it down by category. So if I go, for example, under accessories, we have a lot of the standard applications we've already seen. Many of these are GNOME applications because Budgie, it's not really a fork of GNOME 3, but it is a GTK based de desktop so you do have a lot of GNOME applications available to you although they also have some XFCE applications because Catfish is the file search utility that's uh, the file searcher from XFCE let's check what file manager they are using because I'm kind of curious are they using um, the Nautilus file manager GNOME's file manager or are they using something different and where is the menu system here let's see I can get a menu system here how do I get a menu to appear there should be a menu here with some about information, but I don't know. Ah, I right click. Well, that is weird. If I just go up here to this white space here and I right click, I get the menu system. Uh, I wonder why that's the case. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, the file manager is Nemo 4.6.5. So they're using the Nemo file manager. If I go back to the accessories category just quickly plank is the dock here that they are using just like the ubuntu mate team uses plank ubuntu budgie uses plank as well uh, for a text editor let's see what text editor they're using is this g edit i'm assuming it's gnomes yeah g edit 3.38 so a lot of the standard gnome applications will be available for us we do have a few games available just small games like mahjong mine sudoku under graphics really nothing here to speak of under internet firefox is our web browser and geary is our email client i think geary is a pretty good choice for an email client it's clean it looks good i i've, I've used geary in the past it's not bad so uh, Transmission is our BitTorrent client. Again, that's another GNOME application. We have the LibreOffice suite under Office. We have a other category, but nothing really here. Uh, science, again, that's LibreOffice. Sound and video, we have Celluloid as our video player. Cheese is our webcam application. And Rhythmbox is GNOME's audio player, their music player. Now let's put Ubuntu Budgie to the real test. Control-Alt-T, does it bring up a terminal? It does. Let's zoom in here because this is really important. Let's run HTOP. Ah, Ubuntu Budgie. So it looks like of the six flavors of Ubuntu we did today, only Lubuntu passes the DT test as far as it had both HTOP and Vim installed out of the box. Uh, no other version had HTOP installed and no other version had Vim installed either. So 
let's run htop let's see what kind of system resources we're using very similar to gnome which kind of makes sense it's kind of not really kind of a fork of gnome 3 and it's using about the same amount of ram 821 megs of the four gigs of ram that i gave this vm let's close this terminal so that's it for Ubuntu Budgie 2010. By the way, that version of the Budgie desktop environment was version 10.5.1. If I had to grade these on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give all of them at least an 8. I would give Ubuntu Budgie a 9 because of how good looking that particular distribution is. I give Lubuntu a 12 because it included HTOP and Vim out of the box. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show, Michael, Gabe Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch5530, Akami, Chuck, Claudio, Donnie, Dylan, George, Gregory, Caleb, Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This review of the recently released Groovy Gorilla. It wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. How can you not install Vim out of the box?